Hey everyone, this is Greg with Science Studio. We're excited because we have a new computer build that we will be able to transform from just paper and lists to its physical manifestation. We will actually acquire these parts and we will put this computer together. We will also have a video showing step-by-step -step instructions, this time of how to assemble it. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for being patient with us. What we wanted to do here was run by the parts with you. Um, so maybe if you kind of sort of want to build along with us, I guess, um, that would be great. Um, and so we guarantee that this computer will, for the price, definitely hold up in the gaming ring as well as the central processing ring if you want to do video editing and stuff like that. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into our list and uh, hopefully you enjoy the parts that we've picked. This is a budget build of $600. That seems to be the price point, the sweet spot for a lot of people that don't want to spend $1,000 to have the coolest and baddest gaming tower, rig, whatever. Um, this is just a respectable $600 computer and we're excited about it, like we said, so we're going to dive into it right now. So the first and most important piece to our computer puzzle will be the AMD FX6300 processor. This is generic. We know we included this in our last hypothetical computer build, but this is a solid processor. We can't emphasize this enough. For the price, you are getting really big bang. Um, and so we want to make sure that we stay within the bounds of our $600 budget and for $99.99, I mean, come on. You're getting a hexa-core processor. Don't skip out on this. This deal is great. I'm sure the price will only continue to go down, um, but as of right now, this price is extremely competitive, and that's why we really can't even consider buying an Intel um, when this price exists. I mean, you can buy an Intel i3 for $120, but you're only getting a dual-core. Yes, hyper-threading is there, but I mean, come on. I, I know core-to-core, Intel beats AMD every time. For the price and for six cores, it's 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 almost a no-brainer in this price point to go with the FX6300. And so that's what we've effectively chosen. Um, and so we're gonna move on from that now to our motherboard. And this is the typical Gigabyte AM3 Plus motherboard that we've shown in the past. Um, this is the Micro ATX uh, 78 LMT motherboard that has plenty of USB 3.0 points. Uh, this has uh, HDMI, DVI, VGA all included. Not that we're going to need that because we're going to have a pretty cool graphics card coming up next. Um, but for $56.99, this is, this, is, this is it. I mean, this is really what you want at this price point. We're going to do a bit of overclocking, so you can see there's some heat sinks there, and that's cool. We'll take advantage of those as well. And it has four uh, DIMM slots, which is great. So if you ever want to upgrade your RAM in the future, we're only going with two sticks right now, but four, you know, in the future is possible. So this is, um, I guess, future-proof in that sense. So that's cool, and uh, that's what we're going to take advantage of at that price point. Next is that holy GeForce GTX 960. This isn't a 970, this isn't a 980 Ti, Titan X, whatever, but for 600 bucks, come on, I mean, this is a $219 car, this is just a bit over a third of our budget, but you really can't go wrong with this. And look, 4 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes of VRAM in there, and 3 fan coolers, I mean, come on, this is a, <laughs> this is a really cool card for the price, it's gigabyte, it's reliable, it says WinForce on the front because that's the brand that they advertise with Gigabyte, so it, it looks pretty cool. It's going to look cool in our rig. Um, and like we said, the price is, is very competitive. This is, you know, you can pick the 2 gigabyte version if you want. We just picked 4 because 4 is kind of future-proof. And, uh, you know, we're only at 128-bit you know, processing power, but that's okay. You want to go 256-bit in the same price point, go AMD. That's fine. We went AMD for the CPU, so we're going to go NVIDIA for the GPU. And don't believe those myths out there about how AMD processors can't communicate properly with the GPUs that are NVIDIA-based. That's completely made up. There are, are There's no physical proof that AMD and NVIDIA can't cooperate. I mean, first off, they're entirely separate units, but... Um, there's there's no solid proof that, that there's any interference at all between the two brands when they're working together in the computer. So don't be afraid to buy mixed parts. It's okay. They're compatible. If they weren't, they would be expressed in red letters. 
and you would be seeing several reviews about how, oh, don't buy an AMD card with an NVIDIA graphic card, or vice versa. It just, come on. So on from that rant, we're going to move on to our RAM, which is the kind of final piece to our motherboard puzzle. And this RAM in particular, I mean, 3899, I have never seen two 4 gigabyte sticks of 1600 megahertz RAM for under $40. And these G-Skill Rip Jaws right now, which look pretty awesome by the way, they have pretty cool red heat sinks on them, are only $38.99. Hop on this ASAP, even if you're looking to upgrade, it's okay, you can have mixed mix, match RAM cards. You can have two red ones and two Crucial Ballistics RAM cards. It's not gonna hurt as long as they're both 1600 MHz. Put them in their series, uh, in their dim slots, and you'll be good to go. But for our rig in particular, 8 gigabytes will do us just fine, and at $38.99, oh, that is a steal. So, on from that, we have the power supply, EVGA 500 watt power supply. Generic power supply, but it's 80 plus, so it'll save you a few bucks a month on your power bill. That's great. It comes with a three year warranty. That's great. And we have plenty of cables to supply us the adequate power that we need to make this rig work. Um, so, you know, don't worry, 500 watts is okay. It's, I know it's not 700 or 1,000, whatever this overkill wattages are. For this build, 500 watts is not a problem at all. So, and for $40, that's not a problem either. So that stays within the bounds of our budget. And next, we're going to go with the case. Um, like we've said before, this is entirely up to you. It's not a big deal what case you decide to pick as long as the form factor complements the parts in your list. In this case, you see that in the area that our graphics card would exist in, right there in the middle horizontal line of that case, we have plenty of space for our three fan GPU. And uh, we're looking forward to fitting all the parts in here. This is a nice case. It's not the cheapest case, but it does come with a cool window. We always like the windowed cases. Um, and it's a reliable brand. Thermaltake is a reliable brand. Um, it's $79.27, $12.99 shipping with this particular vendor. But uh, if you want to save a few bucks there, buy a cheaper one. It's hard to find cheap cases that have, you know, windowed side panes and stuff. But we like aesthetics, and we have some room in our budget for aesthetics. So, uh, you know, we're going to take advantage of that. So that's pretty much the build with the exception of storage. And I wanted to run this by you before we hopped over to the last two parts of this build, which aren't necessary, but we're going to take advantage of just because we have a spare hard disk drive lying around. Um, the typical go-to for storage space in a budget build of this kind would be probably the WD Blue one terabyte hard drive. That's not a big deal. Um, it's $52, I believe, on Amazon. Newegg's a similar price, um, and that's cool. You know, that's that's 50 bucks, so that that's a good chunk of your budget. Um, but if you can find a spare hard drive lying around anywhere, if, if you find a computer tower that's not being used anymore that has two hard drives. Oh, gotta... If you find two hard drives in a tower and one of them's not being used, just take it and throw that in your bill. That'll save you $50. You're not going to have a terabyte of storage, but you're going to have storage. You can put your operating system on it and a few good games. I know GTA 5 is like 62 gigabytes, but you know it's upgradable. You can always add more hard drives later when you get the money. So in this case, we just want you to find a hard drive or just spend 20 bucks or 30 bucks on a 300 gig hard drive. Um, and uh, with that in mind, we do want to show you the two extra things that we will be buying with this build, just because we have the spare, uh, we have the, the spare money in our budget for this. We can allot to these things. The first being the Corsair Air Series uh, 120 millimeter fan, Quiet Edition, high airflow uh, Corsair fans. These are great. Um, you can get them in blue, purple, red, white, I believe. And for 20 bucks for two, it's a good deal. Um, these have excellent reviews. Corsair is a very reliable brand. And we plan on putting these in the front of our case. The front of the thermal tech case is actually transparent. So it would look quite cool to have blue glowing lights in the front of our case. Uh, and that's the plan. Uh, we have the budget to do it. That's, that's great. And we're definitely going to seize the day with that one. And the other thing that is uh, probably a little more important, at least, because this isn't really aesthetic uh, oriented, but this is oriented if, uh, toward the CPU if you plan on overclocking that 6300, which comes stock uh, unlocked to be overclocked. Um, you're probably want to buy a third party CPU cooler. 
And in this case, we decided to go with the Cooler Master Hyper T4. This is only $24.99. Uh, most of them are $30, $40, but this one in particular is a pretty good price. You can go with the smaller form factors, the TX3 and the T2, and those are $18 and $16. But $24.99 gives you a solid CPU cooler that will let us overclock our hexacore processor to around 4, 4.2 gigahertz. So uh, we're, we're satisfied with that. I would say that if you wanted to chop anything out of the budget, the first thing to go would have to be those blue LED fans just because they're they're really not necessary. And the Thermaltake case already comes with fans installed, so you're really not missing out on any performance if you decide to skip out on those blue LED lights. Um, so keep that in mind. Remember to stay within the bounds of your budget. It may not be $600, it may be $1,000, um, but just don't overspend because that's always going to be in the back of your mind. Oh, I spent more than I was supposed to, unless you buy something ridiculously crazy that you just focused on because it's such a good item that you bought, like maybe a Titan X or something. But I mean, you're paying a thousand dollars plus for those cards. So um, unless you're filthy rich or just have a lot of money flying around, this is a pretty solid build and a very competitive build for the price of $600. Um, so this is exactly what we're going to buy and this is exactly what we'll be putting together in our next computer building video. We will be sure to attach a link to this video so that when we do upload it you can hop on right over to that and you know watch us build it or maybe build along with us if you decided to purchase parts similar to these. Um, but we wanted to show you what we were going to get before we decided to assimilate everything into the case like I said in the last computer building video. Um, and the next one will be much more professional. We have new equipment, we have new recording equipment, new filming equipment, and uh, we're excited to put together finally a professional computer building video. Um, and so uh, thanks for being patient with us. Um, we will be sure to have the link attached. If it's not here now, that means we haven't uploaded the video yet. But if it is here, seize the day. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. I like wet clothes weighing me down I guess I'm finally dry